Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of today's GK. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was, consider the following statements regarding the lymphatic filariasis. 1. It is a neglected tropical disease. 2. India is committed to eradicate lymphatic filariasis by 2047. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A, one only. Recently, the Union Health and Family Welfare Minister emphasized eradication of lymphatic filariasis. Lymphatic filariasis, commonly known as elephantiasis, is a neglected tropical disease. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Infection occurs when filarial parasites are transmitted to humans through mosquitoes. It's caused by infection with parasites classified as nematodes or round worms of the family Filariae didia. About two in every three people who have lymphatic filariasis don't have severe symptoms. But filariasis usually leads to a weakened immune system. India is committed to eradicate lymphatic filariasis by 2027, surpassing the global target by three years. Hence, statement two is not correct. The WHO recommended preventive chemotherapy strategy for lymphatic filariasis elimination is mass drug administration. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Now, let's begin today's session. First question is, with reference to the Make in India initiative, the Technology Development Fund scheme is associated with which of the following ministries of Government of India? Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Renewable Energy, Ministry of Earth Sciences or Ministry of Science and Technology. The correct answer is option A, Ministry of Defense. Recently, the TDF scheme has adopted a flexible funding approach to encourage applicant participation, offering two types of funding mechanisms which are reimbursement and advance. Reimbursement, DRDO's share of project cost is reimbursed in up to five installments upon successful milestone achievement and advance project funding occurs in stages with up to five milestones allowing development agencies to obtain advance funding by providing a bank guarantee as collateral it is to be remembered that the tdf scheme operates under the ministry of defense and is executed by drdo as part of the make in india initiative it is to be noted that the scheme supports public or private industries, especially MSMEs and startups, in designing and developing indigenous defense technologies. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is, consider the following statements regarding National Medical Library's Electronic Resources and Medicine Consortium. 1. It is an initiative taken by Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare. 2. It provides access to AIMS and Ayush Research Colleges. 3. Its members are categorized as level 1 and level 2. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only 1, only 2, all 3 or none? The correct answer is option C, all 3. Recently, the Union Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare inaugurated the National Conference on ERMED Consortium for Empowering Libraries in Digital Health Transformation. National Medical Libraries Electronic Resources and Medicine, that is NML, ERMED Consortium is an initiative taken by GTE, GGS and MOHFW to develop nationwide electronic information resources in the field of medicine for delivering effective health care. Hence, statement 1 is correct. It extends access to 74 selected government institutes including 14 AIMS and IUS research colleges. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Its members are categorized as level 1 and level 2 based on the number of end users in different institutions. Hence, statement 3 is correct. No membership fee charged. MOHFW provides funds for electronic journal purchases. The e-resources of NML available through ERMEG consortium facilitate remote access to faculty and research students including e-books, e-journals, clinical cases and images. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is, consider the following statements regarding the National Bioenergy Program. 1. It is initiated by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. 2. This program provides state financial assistance for setting up of bioenergy plants. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A, 1 only. 
Recently, the union minister notified that six bio CNG plants and 11,143 small biogas plants have been commissioned under the National Bioenergy Program. The National Bioenergy Program is initiated by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Hence, statement one is correct. It aims to promote bioenergy utilization in India. This program provides central financial assistance for setting up of bioenergy plants. Hence, statement two is not correct. It includes sub schemes such as waste to energy program, biomass program, and biogas program. It promotes non biogas based co generation in industries. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding Pradhan Mantri Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan, that is PM Usha scheme. One, it aims to improve higher education quality. Two, it covers government and government aided institutions of the states and UTs. Three, National Education Policy 2020 is a guiding force in preparing the base for PM Usha. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option C, all three. Recently, the Pradhan Mantri Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan, that is PM Usha scheme, was in the news. Rashtriya Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan has evolved into Pradhan Mantri Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan, that is PM Usha. The PM Usha builds upon the earlier and focuses on enhancing excess equity and quality in higher education. Hence, statement 1 is correct. PM Usha encompasses government and government aided institutions in states and UTs. Hence, statement 2 is correct. The scheme promotes technology and open distance learning to enhance access and quality. It supports NAAC accreditation improvement and emphasizes quality initiatives, e-learning and virtual learning. Scheme interventions include community participation, gender sensitization and aligning with the National Education Policy 2020 which guides PM Usha's foundation. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the partition horrors Remembrance Day. 1. It is observed on 14th August. 2. It will be remembered as Vibhajan Vibhishika Smriti Divas. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, the India has observed the Partition Horrors Remembrance Day. It is commemorated on August 14 as a pivotal day in history when India was partitioned into India and Pakistan in 1947. Hence, statement 1 is correct. This significant event led to the displacement of millions of people and a tragic loss of life. This day will be remembered as Vibhajan Vibhishika Smriti Divas, signifying the Remembrance Day for Partition Horrors, paying tribute to those who tragically lost their lives during the partition. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is recently the term glyphosate was in the news. It is related to pesticide regulation, soil erosion prevention, renewable energy technology or marine biodiversity conservation. The correct answer is option A, pesticide regulation. Recently, the District Agriculture Department of Punjab has warned pesticide sellers against the sale and shortage of glyphosate. The glyphosate is a chemical compound widely used as a herbicide to control unwanted plants and weeds. The exposure to glyphosate has been linked to an increased risk of cancer leading to concerns about its impact on human health. The Punjab government imposed a ban on the sale of all formulations of glyphosate in 2018 due to health and environmental concerns. Alternative herbicides are available in the market such as vinegar, botanical oils, decard, pelargonic acid and glufosinate providing farmers with safer options to manage weeds and pests. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the NAFIS that is National Automated Fingerprint Identification System. 1. The NAFIS is a pan-India searchable database of crime and criminal related fingerprints. 2. It is managed by the National Crime Records Bureau or NCRB. 3. Its main objective is to collect fingerprint data of all the criminals from all the states and the union territories. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option C, all three. Recently, the NAFIS, that is National Automated Fingerprint Identification System of NCRB, has won the gold award under the Excellence in Government Process Re-Engineering for Digital Transformation. The NAFIS is a pan-India searchable database of crime and criminal-related fingerprints which can be accessed by users from all states, union territories and central agencies. Hence, statement 1 is correct. 
It is managed by the National Crime Records Bureau, that is NCRB, at the Central Fingerprint Bureau, based in New Delhi. Hence, statement two is correct. The main objective of the web-based application is to collect fingerprint data of all the criminals from all the states and union territories. Hence, statement three is correct. It provides a unique ten-digit national fingerprint number to each criminal that will be used for the lifetime of an offender. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the metagenomics. One, it involves applying unbiased genome sequencing technologies to patient samples for rapid pathogen identification. Two, it enables the identification of pathogens with prior knowledge of the infectious agent. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option A, one only. The metagenomics is an innovative approach in which unbiased genome sequencing technologies are applied to patient samples for rapid pathogen identification. Hence, statement one is correct. Traditionally, microbiological methods were used for pathogen identification, but metagenomics directly subjects samples to genome sequencing and analysis. The metagenomics is a new approach that was not only rapid but could also be deployed directly on patient samples. Without any prior knowledge of the infectious agent, hence statement two is not correct. This approach was prominently used during the COVID-19 pandemic, allowing scientists to quickly identify SARS-CoV-2 as the causative agent of COVID-19. Genome sequencing technologies based on metagenomics, like the COVID seq assay, were developed globally for SARS-CoV-2 surveillance. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the United Nations Population Fund, that is UNFPA. One, it focuses on issues related to reproductive health, gender equality, and population dynamics. Two, UNFPA's primary headquarters is situated in New York, USA. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are accurate? Only one, only two, both one and two, or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option C, both one and two. Recently, a project of the United Nations Population Fund for Gender Sensitivity in Rajasthan has received support from the experts working for the elimination of customs promoting patriarchy. United Nations Population Fund is a United Nations agency that indeed addresses various aspects of reproductive health, gender equality, and population dynamics. Hence, statement one is correct. UNFPA's primary headquarters is located in New York, USA. Hence, statement two is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Last question is which one of the following best explains or describes the term Project Seventeen A, an initiative for promoting renewable energy in rural areas, a government program aimed at improving transportation infrastructure, a defence project involving the construction of advanced steel fighter jets, or a series of naval ships being constructed with advanced technology. The correct answer is option D. A series of naval ships being constructed with advanced technology. Recently, the launch of Vindhya Giri, the sixth warship of the Project 17A frigates, is in news. The Project 17A frigates are advanced naval warships that follow on from the Project 17 class frigates with improved steel features, advanced weapons and sensors, and platform management systems. Under the Project 17A program, a total of seven ships are under construction. Aligning with the country's resolute commitment to Atma Nirbharta, a substantial 75% of the orders for equipment and systems of Project 17A ships are from indigenous firms, including micro, small, and medium enterprises. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Now it's time for the practice question. Consider the following statements regarding the one district, one product, ODOP wall. One, it aims to promote indigenous crafts and artisans of rural self help groups of women. Two, it falls under the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.